Hello, and welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions you have related to electrical and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. Today, we've been asked to address residential electrical service calculations using NFPA Direct. So from my home screen, in NFPA link, I'm going to move over to the upper left hand side where you can see a series of icons. First is the link logo, but the one below that is a circle with a pin in it and that is where we go to NFPA Direct. So NFPA Direct is a situational based tool where we can be within a situation and come and use these filters to try to uh, navigate to situations that are pre-built um, and determine what code sections apply in those specific situations. You've got four different filters here that apply. One's the occupancy, the system, the space, and the equipment. Now, since we know we're going to do residential electrical service calculations today, I'm gonna to jump right into occupancy and make my way down to residential and then give it a second to populate. So we can see there are a lot of different situations here that have been built. Uh, that would apply to residential situations, but I'm gonna jump into the single family service calculation over here so we can jump into that today. Now, there's 10 different steps that we have here that make our way down to essentially uh, determining the size of the electrical service, the size service conductors, and then the, uh, the size electro, grounding electro conductors that are needed. Um, but we're going to go through each of those steps very quickly just to save on time here. Feel free to pop into link, look a little deeper into this, um, and, and take a look and see, uh, you know, how this works. Now, this is one specific way in the NEC that you can, uh, do electrical service calculations, um, but there's several other uh, variations that could be utilized as well. So just keep that in mind as you're working through this. So again, we have the 10 different steps and I'm gonna jump right into those steps. Uh, first one being general lighting load. So if we click on that and expand the reading area, we have three different categories that everything's basically broken down into. Now we have dwelling unit data, which is gonna be important as we make our way through all 10 steps uh, to utilize the information that's given in order to do the calculations for that particular step. Now within each step, uh, the information that's in bold and italicized is the information that's relevant to that particular step. So you can see here, being in general lighting load, um, the, the floor dimensions um, are relevant in this case because they're bold and italicized. Um, and then if we make our way down into the commentary, um, it gives us more information around the code sections uh, that apply to this. And they're also referenced at the bottom here. So we can go over and choose either of those code sections if we wanna go in and read a little more about it. Uh, but we give some commentary here around, um, you know, what we need to think about the code sections that would apply and whatnot and then it builds down to this calculation so in this particular case we take each of those floor dimensions uh, and calculate it out into square feet so the first floor is 1200 square feet second floor is 900 square feet uh, and then this unfinished full height basement now that's relevant because an unfinished full height basement could certainly be finished off at some point so the current owner may not want to do it or may have plans to do it somewhere down the road uh, maybe they never do it, but then they end up selling the house to somebody that chooses to do that. So in that case, uh, you do need to take that into account um, and utilize that because it could eventually uh, you know, be, be finished off and then come into play with that electrical service. Um, so we build to a total of 3,300 3, square feet here. Uh, code section 2214J tells us that we need to uh, put three volt amps to that. So we've got 9,900 volt amps total for the general lighting load um, that we're going to utilize initially. But you can also there's, see there's an asterisk where we're going to go to step four of 10 because we can apply some demand factors to this lighting load. So we don't necessarily need to put the full amount in. Um, so that is the first step. And we'll make our way back to the second step here, which is small appliance loads. And again, Here's that information, and the only thing we see in bold here is the two small appliance branch circuits. Uh, there's a couple of code sections that apply to that, but essentially we take the two small appliance branch circuits at 1500 volt amps a piece, 
3000 volt amps is what we put in. Now, if you have two kitchens within the house, maybe it's a really big house and there's a couple kitchens, well, then you may need to have four small appliance branch circuits, two per kitchen in that case. So you need to keep that in mind. Obviously, the goal here is to make sure that the electrical service is large enough uh, to take care of whatever the, the home's needs are. Um, so if it's a really big house, you may have to consider that in this case. And also you see here that uh, step 410 applies because the code allows us to apply those demand factors. Even though this isn't technically a lighting load, the code does call out um, that, that this can be applied in the case of those lighting load demand factors. The laundry load. So this, this doesn't have anything to do with the electric clothes dryer, which we'll get to uh, a few steps down, but this is that laundry load for the, for the uh, washing machine or any other laundry load you would have there. Uh, and the code tells us um, that it's 1500 volt amps for that laundry load. And again, step four of 10 uh, applies. So essentially we've got the first three steps, the general lighting load, the small appliance load, the laundry load, we can combine all of those and then apply the demand factors in step four, which we'll move to right now. So step four has everything we've just talked about in bold and italicized, and then it gives us an overview in the commentary, but it calls out specifically table 22042, which gives us those lighting load demand factors and the first row that there's a snapshot of here in that table gives us the dwelling unit occupancy demand factors. So what it tells us is that we have to take our first 3,000 volt amps at 100%, our next 3,001 to 120,000 volt amps at 35%, and then anything remaining over at 25%. Now, depending on the size of the home, you're likely not going to get to that 25% level unless it's a really big home, but you could get to that in the case of, say, a, an apartment building where you're doing an overall service calculation for 20 apartments. Um, you could get down into that, that third or 25% demand factor. Um, so you can see here we've taken our uh, full uh, load that we have here and added everything together. So we've got our 9900 VA from the general lighting that we came up with, our 3000 for the small appliance, 1500 uh, for the laundry, and we come up with a total of 14,400 VA. That's before we apply any demand factors. Then we take our first 3000 out at 100%, leaves us 11,400 remaining, and that 11,400 falls into that next grouping of 3001 to 120,000. So we're just gonna apply 35% to that which gives us 3999, or excuse me, 3990 VA. And then we're gonna add the two together to come up with 6,990 VA, which is what then gets put into our uh, service calculation for essentially those three steps combined. And then if we go back to step five, uh, we have appliances fastened in place. And we can see that we have four appliances here in bold italicized. Those are all considered appliances that are fastened in place. It specifically says it there in parentheses after it. Um, these are all given in uh, voltage and amps. So we're going to have to use Watt's law, uh, P equals I times E, uh, in order to figure out um, what uh, wattage or VA we're going to put these in at. Okay, and we've got that broken down into the calculation down here, how to do that. Again, the commentary gives you a little overview of what the steps are. Um, and then we build all of those out and calculate each one of the individual watts or volt amps in this case. Um, add them all together, we've got 5,016. And the code rule is if you have four or more, then you can apply 75% uh, demand factor to it. So in this case, we do have exactly four. We have a garbage disposal, dishwasher, microwave, hood fan combination, and a trash compactor. So we're gonna take that total amount we came up with, with was 5,016 VA, multiply it times 75%, and that 3,762 VA is what goes into our calculation as we continue to build it. Back to step six. And this is if we have an electric clothes dryer, we may have a gas dryer it may not come into play, but if there's going to be an electric clothes dryer or an outlet installed for one, we have to utilize that. Um, and that is simply uh, done based on table 22054, uh, which in that case tells you 5,000 VA is what we plug in. So that's a pretty easy one. We really don't need to do a calculation there. Uh, the range is very similar to that. 
So the electric range in step seven is the table that follows the dryer table. So we've got 220.55 and that table is a little bit different um, in that it gives us uh, the actual uh, the actual VA or kilowatt that we need to put in KVA in this case for those units. So for example, uh, one appliance as we work across this top row. Now we're going to move all the way over to column C because that's essentially the worst case scenario. Um, because we really likely at the time that we're doing the service calculation, the homeowner may not even have uh, the, that electric range picked out. So we're going to have to factor it as, you know, here's the worst case scenario or, or the largest amount we would have to put in, which is falling into column C. Uh, that's eight kilowatts or KVA, which in that case, if we just converted it to the VA that we need, it would be 8,000 VA. So we're going to input that for our electric range for this step. And we make our way back to electric heat. Uh, that one's really easy. We have to account for it uh, if there's electric heat like baseboard heaters or things of that nature, but they're not permitted to be derated in any way. So the, the code essentially says, put in your VA uh, for your total amount of electric heat at 100% and no derating can be done. Uh, motor loads. So in this case, uh, this dwelling unit data, we've got the air conditioning condenser, which is our only motor load shown here. Uh, if we have two air conditioners, we would have to account uh, for each one in that case and take the largest times 125%, um, or at least one of them if they were identical sized. But um, in this particular case, we just have the one. So basically we're gonna work our way through. You can read the commentary. Again, we've got to convert it uh, you know, to VA because we're given volts and we're given amps. So we convert it to VA and we come up with 5,928 watts and the code says we have to uh, take our largest motor load and multiply it by, by 125%. Uh, so in that case we do this and our input for that motor load or that air conditioning condenser is 7,410 VA. Okay, so with each one of these steps that we've calculated out starting with step four where we do those demand factors so steps four through nine, we've taken all of those VAs that we came out with, added them all together, and we've come up with a total number that we're gonna use in step 10 to determine the service size. So we're given a little more data here. We know that it's a 12240 single phase three wire uh, electrical service. The service conductors are copper, type THWN, and they're going to be ran through schedule 40 PVC and we know that our grounding electrode conductor is copper. And then here in the calculations are those step uh, totals that we came up with for four through nine. Uh, when we total all those together, we come up with 34,162 VA, okay? If we take that down uh, just a little bit below the table 246A there for a minute, just to look at, the, we've got the 34,162 VA, divided it by our line to line 240 volts, gives us 142.35 amps. So that's the minimum ampacity we would need for that service based on all of the information uh, that we've totaled up to get here. So we know there's not a 142.35 amp breaker. <laughs> so we're gonna go up to the table here and figure out the next size and it goes after 125, it goes up to 150. So it's gonna be 150 amp service. Now I know uh, you know, in the trade, in the field, it's pretty common that you're gonna either have a 100 amp service minimum, 150, 200. Um, you know, that's likely what you're going to choose here, but we do need to reference that table 240.6A just to see what the NEC says that next higher size is after we've calculated that ampacity. Um, then we can go down to table 310.12 to determine uh, what size um, conductors we need. So for that 150 amp uh, rated service, copper conductors, we're going to need number one AWG conductors. And then if we go down to uh, the conduit size, we're back in table C11 all the way back in annex, uh, informative annex C. Uh, so with that, we go down to those number ones and across until we can fit three conductors in because we know that's what we have. So we would need one and a quarter inch schedule PVC conduit. And then within table 25066, we can determine what size grounding electrode conductor we need. So because we know we're using number one uh, copper conductors, we're gonna be in that second row down, 
and follow it all the way across to a copper grounding electrode conductor, which is what we uh, gave in the details above. So we know we're gonna use a number six AWG for the copper grounding electrode conductor. So we hope that provided some insight into residential electrical service calculations using NFPA Direct. For more info on how to NFP Link gives you the knowledge you need to get the job done right, please visit www.nfpa.org forward slash link.